Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that I've been asked about quite often and I've just never done an explicit video on it and that's about how you do inventory control for your books, okay? And I'm going to talk about what I would call a level one inventory and a level two inventory. I think there's, there's a basic intro part that if you're not doing, you should be doing and then there's a potential to take that to another level for what I would call really true inventory control. So, hey, I appreciate the view. I look forward to your comments and suggestions. I'm sure that everybody out there, if you've got an inventory control system, you know, there's no real, to me, there's no real wrong way to do it. It's personal preference at some point, as long as it works for you. The important thing is just that you, you implement some kind of inventory control. Uh, you know, it, it, so you don't waste a lot of time. Um, but hey, I appreciate the views. Uh, again, channel support. Uh, thank you so much. I look forward to your comments. And as always, uh, hit that hit that subscribe button and uh, let's just, just keep on doing it. See what happens. So, all right. So jumping right in. This could be for me an episode of my Confessions of a Bad Bookseller. It is something that I, I did not have any inventory control for years. And I kept my books at the time, I was probably only selling 200 books at a time, you know, listed. And I, maybe I just have a little bit of a superpower. I could be like, you know, two or 300 books. I could just kind of remember what shelf it was on and just go to it. But then I actually had one book one time, someone had bought and I could not find it. And, and I know there has to be people out there watching this that uh, you have you sell something and then you spend a lot of time trying to find it, to be able to you know wrap it, box it, and ship it. And that's what I call level one inventory control. It's just the fact of when you sell it that you're able to just go right to where it's at and, and not search for an hour or like I had to do on that particular one, I had to tell the buyer I've lost it. And you know, what's funny is I found it like two weeks later, it was on a, like it was a smaller paperback and it was stuck in a shelf and it wasn't like hid. It was just in a place I didn't remember putting it. So that was the, the wake up call for me. So that's what I call level one. It's being when you sell something that you can go to your shelves and you can just easily find the book. Okay. A level two inventory control to me is you're taking that information and you're you're, you're also incorporating that into either, you know, for most people, most of us, a spreadsheet will do. You don't have to have like some formal database or something, you know, although if you're, if you're good at that, do it. Um, but even just a spreadsheet where you take that position, uh, you know, that, that SKU number we'll get into the stock keeping unit and you record that in a spreadsheet as well, or maybe along with some other information so that it's not only when you sell something that you have control that you can query your spreadsheet and your notes. And, you know, for some reason, if you, you know, it's not, it, you have access to that book, not just from a sale, but you can, you can look it up however you want. So we'll get into that. So um, the basis of an inventory control system is what you hear people say, SKU, S-K-U. And that stands for stock keeping unit. And there's lots of ways you can do this, but uh, a lot of people use tubs, but they're selling miscellaneous things, right? But the, it, what I'm saying will apply that if you have shelves and tubs, right? But effectively, what you want to do is you want to label each shelf, okay? You can do that in your mind, or you, know, you can use a sticky note, sticky note, but like my shelves behind me, I have numbers for them. You could call a bookcase A, and you could call it a shelf, A1, and then you could have another shelf as A2. Or if you prefer, each shelf could just have a letter. Doesn't matter what bookcase, A, B, C. So on mine behind me, you know, here's what I would do. This shelf right here is my shelf A1, or if I prefer to call it A, I could call it A. Then I could have A2, or I could, if I wanted to just do every shelf is different, I do the, I do it as A1, A2. So this is shelf A, or bookcase A. This is bookcase B. I have a couple of others on the side that are smaller. I have C and D. So I have shelf number one on bookcase A. Shelf number two on, be A, this would be A2. Then I have, here's 
A3. And I'll put these other letters in case you just want to do ABC. Again, there's it's personal preference. So then I would call this one A3 down here. Oh, just fell. That's why I don't put new stickies. I remember them. Uh, but then when I go to my bookcase over there, that top shelf would be B1. So here's B1. Okay. So A1 through 6, B1 through 6. Okay. That's all you have to do to, to get that's your first step of organizing. Now, here's the key. What I do is when I do my eBay listing, in the title, at the end of it, I'll use a little asterisk, and then I'll go SKU A1 if it goes on this shelf, SKU A2 if it goes on this shelf, and so on. That lets me know in the title that, you know, where to look, okay? I do not number the books on the shelves. So I don't go book one, two, three, four, five, because books can get out of order. But for me, if I know that that a book that sells goes to a particular shelf, and I actually have books double stacked here, but still, if I know it's on the shelf, it's easy for me to find. I don't spend a lot of time sorting. Um, you know, I can just go right to that shelf, pull them out, pull it. I find that if, if, you, if I number each book on the shelf, things get out of order and that just doesn't work for me. So for me, I just put an SKU, A1, A2, B1, B2, B6. If I put SKU, C3, then I, know, then I know that that book is on my bookcase C, my third bookcase on the third shelf, C3, okay? Now, in addition to putting that in the title, and I, I'm gonna try to break. I'm gonna try to show you these pages in just a second um, on on the eBay listing. eBay also has a a line on the listing of a custom SKU. So I put the, my SKU number, my my A one A two whatever, my SKU A one A two in the title, but I also put it in the custom SKU line. Okay, if you're listing on eBay. And it's, um, and again, and I'm, I'm just an eBay guy right now. So, you know, this is just really from an eBay perspective, but you can use this for any stock keeping you need to do. But the, the thing is, is I put it on the, in the title and on the custom SKU line. If I'm listing, and I do most of my listing on eBay on my desktop computer, my laptop, that custom SKU is right under the title. And I'll show you, I'm gonna break away and show you photos of that. But the, if you're listing through the phone, it's kind of a pain to get to. You have to go down into your description and then scroll way down at the bottom. And I'll, I'm on the breakaway and show that. But ultimately, by putting a SKU number that references the shelf, whatever system you want to, in both the title and in the custom SKU field, it will allow you to go to it and it's going to save you tons of time. So that's the basics of a level one inventory system. Okay, so let me let me we'll show you some screenshots here, and then we'll talk about where you could take this for level two. So this is just the eBay listing page. If you're listing from your computer, you see where I put it in the title, and right below that, there's your custom SKU field. You just enter it, and you're done. Now, if you're listing from a cell phone, your title's straightforward. But to get to the custom SKU, you have to go down into the item details, and it's not at the top. There's all this stuff, you know, on language and ISBN and all that. You have to literally, you have to, it's the very last thing, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom. At the very bottom, you will see the custom SKU. You hit the custom SKU, and then it's going to pop up a text window where you can put it in. So. That's it, but it's it's a lot it's a lot tougher from a cell phone than it is from a desktop. All right, so for a level two system, I would do the same thing at you know putting in the title and putting putting it in the custom SKU field in my listing, but then I would also create a spreadsheet, and I would have the title of the book and my SKU number. Okay, or you could do SKU number first, title the book, and then there's other information. You may go ahead and start, you can merge this with your accounting system, basically. You can put in your price paid, your, you know, your cost of goods, where you got it, the date you got it, the date you listed it, um, you know, whatever information you want for that book record tied to that SKU number. Then when it sells, you could update your sold date, 
and you can move that to another worksheet or just mark sold and you can sort by sold. But what that does is if you have this stuff in a spreadsheet, it will allow you to do more um, sophisticated inventory control. You know, if you want to sort by, you know, do things like profitability or how long items have been in your stock or where you're really getting most of your stock, you know, from what's the most profitable stores you're going to, you start building that kind of, of information in your spreadsheets, then you, you can, um, you know, you, you, you can take advantage of that. I personally, uh, this is a, again, <laughs> confessions of a bad bookseller. I I'm horrible at it because it takes discipline and it does take time. Okay. So for me right now, I, I just, I don't do the level two. I just do a level one and then, you know, I have my sales records where I keep up with all my costs and all that so I can do my accurate accounting, you know? So, um, that's it. That's inventory control. It's don't overthink this. Just number your shelves by letters or numbers and put that in your title and in your custom SKU and you'll get started. It's going to save you tons of time on when you sell something that, I mean, that is so frustrating when that happens and uh, it'll save you tons of time and tons of, of frustration when you can't find a book or you feel like you're searching through your stock for 30 minutes to try to find it. So anyway, I hope that helps. Hope that gives you some insight on how to just do a simple inventory system. Uh, again, appreciate the view. I uh, look forward to your comments and, um, you know, we'll see you soon. Bye.